everyone, and welcome to another edition of Carpool Gaming in Review. Now, we're going to do a different review discussion this time. I know you've heard me talk about MLB The Show 23 and Wax Poetic and just nonstop talk about it. But good news is, you're not going to hear me talking about it. You're going to hear <laughs> it from a different perspective. We have Marcus McCracken joining us. He's visually impaired, and he's going to be going over all the accessibility features, and he's going to tell you what it's like to play this game from a different perspective. I've spoken to Marcus uh, plenty of times before in the past, but we're going to get a different perspective on this game. And we're also going to get the perspective of someone that, you know, is only playing it pretty much because I talk about it so much. And <laughs> so we're going to hear about what Matt thinks about the game. How are you doing, guys? Pretty good yourself. I'm all right. I'm all right. It's a, uh, you know, whatever time it is, whatever time of the day it is, we won't give it away. Don't want to keep all the magic, podcasting magic out there. But I wanted to talk to you guys about MLB The Show because it's been getting a lot of praise in the sports gaming world, especially um, just recently EA put out their golf game and it's, um, yeah, it's bad. Uh, and NHL EA has done a, a job of always putting out games. And I know Marcus, you've, you've spoken to this in length, uh, with myself, even on the internet where it seems like they care about one thing and that's the only thing. And that's getting money on the back end. And I get that, but at the same time, it doesn't make the game very fun. Uh, MLB, the show has done a very good job in the past of making people actually care about baseball, which I thought that's what the games were about. I thought they were just giant advertisements for the league. But I wanted to get your guys' perspective. So I'm going to talk to you, Marcus, first. I want to get your perspective on what your initial thoughts of as you've had it for almost two weeks now. Okay. Th thanks for that intro. Um, as far as the actual baseball game goes, I was going into it looking for specific accessibility settings. Uh, unfortunately, that's not there. Now, with that said, I am enjoying it very much with all the different game sliders that you can adjust, not to mention the dynamic dynamic um, skill level that will adjust as you progress in your, your game style. So what I did, because I am visually impaired, I've adjusted some of the sliders just so that I can get used to the controls a little bit. Um, I've got the pitching down pretty much to a T as good as it's going to be against the computer. My batting, that's that's a work in progress. It's all timing for me. So I have to, I'm trying to figure out the time frame from the, the time that ball leaves the pitcher's hand to come across the, the, the mount, the swing. But all in all, I'm having a great time with it so far. And honestly, I haven't been able to say that since um, Madden. Really? Yeah. Yeah, because I know you weren't a big fan of NHL this year. No, unfortunately, and, and I missed the NHL franchise, but I have a problem spending 10 minutes trying to navigate menus when the narration should work in that one. I Yeah, I still hold it to a standard to Madden, but with the MLB, I do use the Zoom feature that's built in the Xbox just so that I can navigate the menus a little bit better. And once I know where I'm going, I shut the magnification off and just take it from there because I have the... The menu screen itself, it's very clean, and I like the the light background print on the dark on the dark background. So the print's like a light white, which is very easy, and the dark prospect. Now, if I were to ask uh, San Diego, uh, San Diego, yep, San Diego mm -hmm. Studios. If I were to ask them, like a consulting, if they would be able to put anything in it, I think a couple of things I would ask for is. Um, the ability to adjust the, the print size that would help tremendously if at all possible a screen reader but that's uh, difficult and that's a whole different subject um screen brightness could be adjustable but the main thing uh for myself at least would be uh, the ability to adjust the the print just for the menus other than that i'm having i'm very happy with the game so far now you mentioned that you're counting the the time between the pitch and getting it over the mound, which kudos to you because each pitcher has the different velocity and it depends on if they're throwing a slider, if they're throwing a fastball, a cutter, like a knuckleball, like, so are you, is there specific sounds that you're able to hear and define which pitches are being thrown? So I was just actually playing it before we started. Um, what I'm trying to navigate as soon as the pitcher starts his movement, I I'm trying to count down from that point. And there is almost like a swish sound just before it hits 
the the mount and once i master that i think i'll be a little bit better with the batting but i have not mastered the counting because as you said the pitchers are all different but i'm trying mm -hmm. to i'm trying to picture their movement and then start from there yeah because for myself i unless it's a fastball which unfortunately for this game and if you play the game enough um the fastball i would suggest this marcus as someone that very rarely can get a hit off a slider or those specific pitches. The fastball, actually, there's some great videos on YouTube. The fastball mechanic, for some reason, for every pitcher is almost the exact same. So you could actually see the way the hand moments. Like, I know that you have to zoom in, but if you're able to just um, decipher that movement, you'll actually know that fastball is coming, and the fastball is the one. Like, that's pretty much what I hit all my home runs with. And you can actually change the stadiums so it makes it easier to hit home runs as well. Um, but it would actually give you a slight advantage because I would say this as someone who's played the game, you're at least in the in the first three pitches or the first four pitches, you're gonna get a fastball. So you're not gonna strike out, you're not gonna walk. So you could actually try and almost pinpoint that one pitch. And as soon as that fastball comes, the timing is almost the exact same, depending on what if you're playing a rookie, uh, veteran, all star because it changes on that aspect. But I would say that could be something you could use, Marcus, to um, make the game easier for you. But I, I never even thought about that, of having to count each pitch. And then as soon as you said it, I'm like, oh my God, I'm having a hard enough time just knowing the fastball. Like I can hear the the little whoosh that you're talking about. Yep. And then in my mind, I'm like, one, two, three, swing. And literally every time it's a home run. Oh, there is one more option I'm going to try. I have a pair of Iris Vision glasses, which actually okay. help me see a little bit better. And those alone have a zoom feature. So if I can zoom those in just enough to see the picture and then possibly try it from that way. And with baseball being a slow paced game, it might be more beneficial with these particular glasses. Yeah, I would think that this might be the easier of the two. Now, for the listeners and the viewers, you're visually impaired, but you can see it. You can see somewhat but not really so i just want you to ex just maybe explain a little bit more your your impairment um just so people understand how when you play a game and people talk about getting good at a game you know what you got to get marcus good because you are actually a pretty good gamer and you have to overcome a lot of obstacles just to play the games absolutely so the first things first i am completely blind in one eye i do have a prosthetic so um that was actually my good eye at one point in time uh, my right eye, how I explain it to people now is on a foggy day, picture that, but picture it without it ever leaving. So I'm constantly looking into a fog. Or when you finish a glass of milk, try looking in the bottom of it, cover at least, try covering one eye and then see how clear you can see out of, the, out of your glass. Uh, that's what I deal with on a constant basis. So Naughty Dog is your friend because yes, of the way they, they yeah, very much so. Yeah. So, Matt, I wanted to get your take because I, I know you only played it because of me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, you know, also because, you know, Sony gave us a code. Yeah. Thank you, Sony. Thank you, Sony. But um, I wanted to get your take as someone that, one, isn't the biggest baseball fan, and two, I wouldn't even say is a big sports video game fan. No, I mean, like, I, I play the occasional random one, but I usually stick more to the arcade side of things. And, yeah, you kind of hit the nail on the head. I, I don't know baseball. Um like, like I've been to maybe like one Jays game in the entirety of my life and that was it. And I, and I don't, I don't really ever anticipate going back unless it's with a big group. What happened if they have like anime day? Net, then I'll go. Then I'll go. Okay. But yeah, no, I think that the game is like, it's incredibly well made. And obviously the, the amount that you've talked about it and like we, we've had conversation after conversation about how much you love this game. I wanted to experience it and I wanted to see what it was like. So I've been playing on Xbox Series X. Um, I've had absolutely no performance issues, nothing like that to speak of. The game runs fantastically. It looks great. Uh, there were some moments where I'm just like, am I watching a game right now? Or is this legit just how the game looks? It looks fantastic. Um, it plays fantastically as well. I think that like getting the mechanics down and stuff is really, really satisfying as you try and figure out um, you know, what kind of pitch style you want to use, what kind of batting style you want to use. And I appreciate that the game lets you play with each one before kind of hopping in properly. But what I will say is that I do wish that the game, I wish the onboarding experience with the game was a little bit more streamlined because I feel like they do a good job of every time that you hop into a new mode, they're like, they give you kind of the general overview, like, here's what this is. And then, but they still hit you with the same, 
uh, tutorials once you're actually in the game to be like, press X to hit the ball, press this to do this. But in terms of like, I couldn't figure out how to swap my, uh, my pitcher until without going online and then looking up a tutorial on how to do so. So like, or you could have, you know, called me. I could have called. I pick up the phone. I don't know what reference that is. Is that? Oh, that's that's from the. Wow, you really are young. It's from the nineties. It's this like thing that used to be always on television. I don't know if you remember Marcus. It was always like one eight seven six nine eight five eight five, and then there was like person was like pick up the phone. Ah, it doesn't matter. Doesn't is this matter. like is this like the house hippo? Um, no, but it was like at the same time as like Cleo. Cleo would be like the psychic hotline. She'd have her thing, and then there was the. You know what? It doesn't matter. <laughs> It doesn't matter. It would be like on CTV, like late night at the movies. And then they'd have these terrible, terrible commercials. What? Okay. Anyways. Uh, yeah. Like I do wish that the onboarding experience <laughs> was a little bit better because I wish like, cause like, I got on like a little pop-up that said like, oh, your, your picture's getting tired. You should sub them out. And I'm like, all right. And then I go to one place. Oh, no, this isn't the place. Oh, to you got to warm them up too. I know. So that's what I mean. There's a lot of nuances here that as someone who doesn't know baseball as a whole a very well and b who doesn't know mlb the show because this is the first time that i've played it i do wish that some of the like some of the tutorials were a little bit more defined and a little bit more in depth, in depth. yeah because again like i appreciate the tutorials that they gave me but when it comes to stuff like that when i'm in the middle of a game and they're like yo your pitcher's tired you should change him i'm like i would like to game how do i do that so there are some things like that that i feel like i just wish made the experience better for new players because i don't think it's an issue with the game itself again it's fantastic i cannot i don't have anything bad to say about this game outside of from my personal experience coming at coming at it from someone who doesn't know the sport and doesn't know the game very well i do wish that they made the barrier to entry a little bit easier um because they do have stuff that that can help with it but i do wish that that the entire experience was just a little bit more streamlined if that makes sense one thing i i'll give you a tip um you can change it so they automatically get pictures ready for you so you can actually go into the difficulty settings. You can actually go into it's under general and then switch over to difficulty. And then there's auto fielding. You can turn those all on. And then at the very bottom, you can actually turn on that. They will warm up a pitcher for you. So if the pitcher is getting tired automatically just changes the pitcher for you. See, like, that's what I mean. Like I, why, why they like, didn't tell you? Yes, exactly. I like I wish that this kind of stuff was communicated a little bit better. Um, just because again, like I feel like I want to learn it. Like I am enjoying the game. Please don't get me wrong. It's not that I don't like it. I am enjoying it, but the, I feel like I, there's just a lot of learning to do on my part, which is fine, but I just mm -hmm. wish the game was a little bit, I wish it held your hand a little bit more through the opening hours to help you learn this stuff. If you're not as familiar with it, I'm sure you could turn it all off. If you, you know, like you're someone who's like yourself, a veteran to the game. But I wish for newer players, they do need that experience a little bit more seamless. I, I get it. And, I, and you know what? They they probably could have done a better job because I know they do start you off in the game and they give you that like the game is loading in the background. So they make you play a couple innings and they're giving you a tutorial. Mm -hmm. I almost wish as someone who's a veteran of the game that they make you each inning try different settings automatically. Like here's a different way to hit. Here's this. Here's that. Just so you could try it. Like almost like, hey, here's a super tutorial. Like. As much as I am not a big fan of the the gotcha mechanics that EA puts in their games, EA actually does a good job of tutorials. Mm -hmm. So when you play an NHL game, they'll have specific tutorials to to moke you through. And I know Madden does as well. Like I am not um, a big football fan, um, but when I played Madden this year, um, I had to go through the tutorials. And so I, I could see that, especially in the Diamond Dynasty or anything like that. If you try to do those modes, there really is no tutorial. So I, I wanted to ask you both this question because. I really feel sports games, this is one of the reasons that they're they're made. Marcus, does the game you feel sell you on the sport of baseball? From my point of view, who really has not been into baseball probably since the 90s when the Jays won back-to-back. -back. Mm -hmm. um, Matt wasn't even born then. When? <laughs> in the 90s. 91. <laughs> I was born in 92, man. See? Oh, my God. I was joking. Oh. Uh, yeah. Um, f for me, I'm looking for that next sports game to take NHL's place. And honestly, I think this one will, will be that. Um, chances are I'm probably going to just turn around and purchase it for my PlayStation 5 due to the fact that the dual, dual shock. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think that's going to make a huge difference just in my gameplay style. So I think this will be the game for me as far as sports games go. I wish they could do a lot better in a lot of different sporting areas, but um, 
I think with their franchise and there's a lot of potential here, especially on the, the next gen consoles um, for the baseball and and for Madden. And you notice I just skipped the hockey. Yeah, it's no, it's bad. I get it. I I remember us talking. It's 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 real bad. It's like they um, it's like they don't care. Uh, you might like the new EA Golf because there is a lot. I noticed there is a ton of accessibility settings, and it's it's um. It's really slow and it's very simple. Like the the swing mechanics and such. So out there, Marcus, you can go actually try it if you on Game Pass. So anybody who has Game Pass, you can actually go into Game Pass right now and do a free trial of that game. Um, and MLB The Show did also have the free trial as well before. They actually had a beta at, at one point. So Matt, did this sell you on the game of baseball? It has made me more interested in it than I've ever been before. I don't know if it's sold me on it entirely because, again, there's a lot of learning that I have to do on my side. But it's made me at least interested enough to try to put an effort into learning it. So while I wouldn't say it's sold me on the game, I do think that I am having fun with it. And for the, I think this is the first sports game in, like, God even knows how long that kind of sits in the back of my mind a little bit being like, oh, should I load it up for a little bit today? So like it's made me curious enough that I want to keep playing it. Whether it sold me enough on the game as a whole, perhaps. Maybe this is one of those situations that as I understand what I'm doing and how this game works more, maybe then in turn it will make me more interested in the sport because again, like I have had no real love for it before. Um, but it's it's made me curious enough. I'll say that much. And and Marcus, my my question to you is what improvements? Because I, I've given the review. If you want to go check it out, um, go on Carpool Gaming uh, on our YouTube channel, and there's a review there. But Marcus, I want to know from you, what improvements do you think that they can make upon this game for next year? For myself, um, yep. besides the um, the font size option, one thing I was just thinking about is possibly putting in audio cues for the pitching. So as the ball approaches the sound will get a little bit uh, louder. Kind of like would... what Naughty Dog does. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. I see. We, I know what you mean for the, for the clickers. Yeah. I think that would be a huge improvement for a lot of us trying to find that right sports game or looking to look something different to play. Um, and I'd be very curious because I know PlayStation just put accessibility tabs into their store. I'd be very curious to say if this, this game actually has one there. I'll, did they I'll go just, check. Did they just? Yeah, they do that? just did it. Oh, okay. They just did it yesterday. Yep. Like literally yesterday. Keep going, guys. So, Marcus, what I I know that you want more things from this game. So, besides that, what else do you think could improve it? I, like I said, I'm just fairly new getting back into, especially baseball games. So, to me, this is almost. I don't want to say almost perfect, but almost perfect from my standpoint. Okay. I, I don't know really what else they could do. Like they've got a story mode. Um, I haven't dove into the, the new Negro load the mode Negro, yet. I, I yeah. would suggest um, it is very narrated. So you might thoroughly enjoy it. They do a phenomenal presentation on it. Unfortunately, you, you'll, you'll lose that portion of it, but I think you'll still be able to hear it. Because yeah. they do a very good job with sounds. Um, they have a narration throughout the whole thing you do in the storylines. So the whole thing is narrated. I think when I, I try that, I'll actually use my other glasses just so I can read whatever needs to be read. Because there's okay. a lot of history there that I, I, I take pride in um, that culture. So I'm mm -hmm. looking forward to jumping into that. But that'll be a mode that I use my um, iris vision glasses for just on that chance I need to do some reading. Um, other than that, though, I really don't know what they else what else they could improve on besides adding some um, optional accessibility settings. Like, a, not necessarily a spot for accessibility; just have the options there just to enlarge the font. And if they would like to, they can add the screen reader. I'll be happy. Yeah, because I know, like you said, they have they have. I'm I'm even going up on their webpage here on the PS5, and they have the displays and sounds, but and the screen reader now you're saying even when you turn the screen reader on it doesn't work no unfortunately okay. um the, the xbox accessibility is it's great in a lot of ways but um the screen reader will only read out 
uh, certain games that don't already have the narration built in it. I'd be uh, very curious if you played it on PS5 mm -hmm. because its screen reader actually is a setting you can put into the console itself that it does it no matter what on every game. And see that I did not know that. So I am now I'm very curious. Yeah. So the, on, on a PS5 console, you can get a uh, screen reader. Uh, yep. So it'll read text on screen and provide spoken guidance for operating the console and the games. And then they have on the PS5 console offers a wide range of customized displays and sound features, including zoom, color correction, text size, mono audio for headphones, plus more. So you can actually go in there and they can put zoom on inverted colors, bold text, high contrast, so check marks, um, auto scroll speed settings, reduced motion. You can actually put that into the console itself. Yeah, that's that's really cool. Um, I knew about the other accessibilities, but I, I didn't know you could do that because uh, on the Xbox, it's uh, it's titled descriptive video, and it okay. will tell you on the side it'll only work with certain games. It's not implemented in all games as of yet. Yeah, and so MLB The Show does not... I'm going in here right now. It does not have the accessibility tags. It's, they're not there. It says they're rolling it out, so it might not be there yet. Um, it says press triangle button, button when looking at a game's hub, and you'll see whether the title features to support with visual, audio, or motor needs. So I will double check um, while I ask Matt the question, because I can literally just turn on my act, my PlayStation here. We'll turn the sound off, you know, because this is what we do. It's live, live, it's live. live. It's live. Um, it's live. I want to know, Matt, Besides the tutorial, what could they do to make this game better for you? Because they make this game good enough for me. And that's why I want to ask this question. I'm going to, I'm the guy that buys this every year. I'm going to mm -hmm. buy this game, but they need to find more people like yourselves that want to buy this game. I think the biggest thing is that like, I feel like this is, and I I've kind of do feel like this isn't something inherently that's just built into a lot of sports games is that they make them the games for the fans, right? Like they make for, they make mm -hmm. the games for the people who already know the games who already can, you know, get stoked about what you were asking about certain players, whether they had them or not. I'm like, I have no earthly idea. So like, I feel like the, like the, like a baseball for dummies mode or some sort of that, like kind of built into it, I think would go a long way in helping people like myself who may be curious or who may want to check it out. Um, given that ease of access, because again, this, it is on game pass, right? And if it was on game pass and I just wanted to hop in one afternoon, I just hopped in and checked out, I would check back out within the first hour just because of how overwhelmed I felt. But I knew that, you know, like, you, you know, how much you love it. And I wanted to give it an honest chance. I do feel mm -hmm. like having something like that for new players would make a massive difference. Because then again, if you already have it on MLB The Show, and correct me if I'm wrong, Corp, but there is already, there is cross save. Um, yes, so it's just so like, you could play this on your Nintendo Switch, your Xbox, and your PlayStation 5. Cross save, cross progression, whatever you do on one shows up in the other. The only thing that doesn't work is uh, if you bought stubs. So I, I don't do it. Store wise, but say right. you bought stubs on the Nintendo, you have to spend them in the Nintendo store. It's vice versa. Which is fine because then again, like that's such a great incentive for players if who if who already have Game Pass, who already own the game there, it will be like, yeah. all right, well, I already have this game here. Let me buy it on my Switch. Let me buy it on my PlayStation and still 100%. be able to play it wherever I want. There's a lot that this game does right that I think if it just made the experience a little bit easier for new players, I think it would go a long way to, you know, more people adopting the game as a whole. All right. Well, I, I greatly appreciate both of your opinions on this. Like, I, I truly thank you, Marcus, for joining me uh, and Matt. You know, Matt, I see you all the time. Yeah. Actually, you guys won't see Matt for like in two weeks because he's leaving me. But, you know, it is what it is. It is, what uh, it is. But I, I just wanted more opinions on this game because, like I said, you can go check out my review. I love the game. But I take your suggestions and I 100% agree. I didn't think about the tutorials just now. And I look at a game after talking to Marcus and I've known Marcus for over a year now, and he's, he's told me a lot more about video games and I see it from a, a different perspective. If they could do what naughty dog does in their games and just have those settings pretty much in every video game, it should be at this point where accessibility settings are a must before a game goes gold mm -hmm. and it should be a thought process, but you know, Maybe that's in uh, in the future. It looks like it's something. I know PlayStation's got the, the Leonardo controller coming, and the tabs are not there yet. I just went through the whole store. The accessibility tabs are just, they're not even showing up yet. It says it's rolling out slowly, so it'll be there when it's there. But uh, Marcus, if you're not here with us, where everybody can find you? Like I sound like Matt now. Jesus, I'm going <laughs> to grow up. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I can be found on Twitter at Marcus McCracken. 
Um, I'm also on YouTube at Get Back Into The Game. Uh, I will also plug Get Back Into The Game's Facebook page. Just do a search and you will find me. Other than that, you'll find me hanging out with Carpool Gaming on Discord. And Matt, if you're not here with me, where can people find you? <sighs> Court, I thought I would never hear the day when you asked me this wonderful question. You can find me over on Twitter at Matt underscore Silver Soul. And of course, on the PlayStation Drive each and every week, most of the time, uh, on uh, 1 p.m. Monday's EST Come Hang. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us. And, you know, drop some com- uh, dro- dro- drop us a like. Put some comments into the YouTube there. Hit us up on Twitter. Let us know what your thoughts of this game are because, honestly, no one wants to hear about mine anymore. Have a good day.